Hello everyone, this is Sir Gantelot back again with another video aimed at helping you prepare for your PMP exam, your Project Management Professional exam. And this topic is confidence levels for estimates, maybe estimates for duration or for cost, based on the value of sigma or standard deviation. Now we do have other videos on YouTube for you. Um, not all of them are about preparing for the exam, uh, many of them just cover uh, project management or in some cases Microsoft project topics, but collectively they are aimed at helping you as a project manager slay those project management monsters that plague you. And by monster we mean management, organization, network, scheduling and tracking errors. But back to the PMP exam, and let's think about one particular related video in this series, one related lesson. And that is uh, the one titled PMP Exam Readiness, an Introduction to Three-Point Estimating. You might want to refer to that because that's where we uh, see how to derive our uh, values for sigma in the first place, and indeed coming up with the estimates in the first place. So check that out if you have time. Let's think about the PMP exam again. and Let's look at where the confidence levels for um, estimates fit in there, making use of standard deviation or sigma. Well, as you know, the exam is based on a book titled The Project Management Body of Knowledge, or PMBOK. And in Chapter 6 there, Project Time Management, one of the processes, Estimate Activity Durations, has a tool and technique called three-point estimating that uh, makes use of um, the sigma concept. Likewise, Chapter 7, Project Cost Management under the process Estimate Costs. Again, a tool and technique there is three-point estimates. And also in Project Quality Management, Chapter 8, uh, Standard Deviation or Sigma comes up in a couple of places. In particular, take a look at Control Charts and also Proprietary Quality Management Methodologies. And in particular there, look at Six Sigma. Okay, so let's think about the concept of confidence levels. And we'll illustrate it firstly with a golfing example. Let's say this person here is all ready to try and get a hole in one. They've estimated the force, the angle, the, and everything else they need to do to get that hole in one. Now we know that the likelihood of that is very, very small indeed. And what we definitely know for sure is the likelihood of getting that tiny little target right there is lower than this slightly wider target, a foot or two either side. Not only that, if we go maybe uh, even further either side, a larger target altogether, we've got an even higher chance of hitting that than either of the previous two examples. And then lastly, if we think of a, a target anywhere from the front of the green through to the back of the bunker sitting behind it, again, we've got a higher chance of hitting that target than either of the previous three. So let's move away from golf and come back to project management. And of course, we estimate a lot of things in project management. Let's think of an example where we have an activity and we've estimated the duration to be 85 minutes. Now, that's only an estimate. What we might want to know is, well, what is the distance either side in time terms of that 85 minutes that we can be 95% confident that we'll hit when this activity actually takes place? In other words, for that 95% confidence level, what is the earliest and the latest likely start date that specify the range that we can be 95% confident of actually landing within? To do that, we need to learn the following table. We need to learn the confidence levels that equate to different, two different sigma values. And remember that sigma is standard deviation, denoted by the Greek letter lowercase sigma there. Now, for various numbers either side of the mean of sigma, various numbers of sigmas either side of the mean, we have certain confidence levels associated with that. And here they are. To hit a target one sigma either side of the mean, we only have a 68.26% confidence of hitting that. That's quite a small target but a larger target of two sigmas either side, we can be 95.46% confident of hitting that. Likewise, three sigmas either side, 99.73% confident of hitting that. And that very large target, six sigmas either side, 
we can be almost certain of hitting that. In fact, 99.9997% confident. And you need to memorize these for the exam, by the way. Now, in our example, we were talking about 95%. The closest one there is 2 sigma. So, in order to actually answer questions on the exam, you also need to know what the number of sigma is. Is it 15, 17, 22, or what is it? Not how many sigmas either side, but what is sigma in the first place? In most, quest in most questions that you'll get, you will be given that value. They'll tell you what the value of, sta of sigma or standard deviation is. In some cases, however, you might need to calculate sigma, and of course, probably the estimate as well, the mean estimate from a three-point estimating scenario. And to help you with that, again, just a reminder that there's another video uh, loaded uh, called PMP Exam Prep, an introduction to three-point estimating. So take a look at that. So you might get a question that reads, as you see here, what is the 95% confidence range of possible durations for an activity where the estimated mean duration is 85 minutes and the standard deviation is 17.5 minutes? So all the information we need is actually given to us there. So let's consider that question. I, I strongly recommend you just sketch these out. It helps uh, remember what it is that you need to do with these. Just write these down on the scratch pad during the exam. So our estimated mean duration given to us in the question is 85 minutes. And we need to determine the earliest likely finish, latest likely finish, that we can be 95% confident of landing within that range. Now remember, the 95% confidence level is two sigmas either side of the mean as much as two sigmas earlier or as late as two sigmas later. And in our question we were told that the value of sigma is 17 and a half minutes. So two times sigma is 35 minutes. We can be 95% confident therefore of being up to 35 minutes early or as much as 35 minutes late. Somewhere within that range is our 95% confidence level. So to answer the question then, our 95% range of durations is from 50 minutes through to 120 minutes. So we have the answer then. There was the question again, 95% confidence range for an 85 minute uh, duration with a standard deviation of 17 and a half minutes. The answer was from 50 minutes through to 120 minutes. Now a couple of quick comments. Firstly, Remember that this is a practical application of using statistics rather than deep dive statistical theory. If you have studied statistics in great depth, you might be thinking, well, you know, this is, uh, this is just a, an oversimplification. Well, fortunately, all you need for the PMP exam is an oversimplification. Secondly, in various books, you might see those confidence levels noted with very slightly different numbers. In this example here, and in many books, you'll see Six Sigma shown in its full version of 99.9997. Sometimes it's just abbreviated as 99.999. Nevertheless, in the question, it will be very obvious to you whether you should be using one sigma or two sigma or maybe three sigma. And remember, finally, you've got a low probability of hitting a small target and a higher probability of hitting larger targets. In this example, maybe uh, this here is one sigma either side, maybe this is two sigmas either side, a 95% confidence level, maybe this is three either side, and so on. Now, just before closing, a reminder that there is a related lesson mentioned a couple of times, an introduction to three-point estimating. You can find that on YouTube as well. And uh, finally, I, I would like very much to thank you for watching this. I hope it has been helpful. And do take a moment to check out our sponsor, Westall Murray International, a project management training, consulting and services company. It's based in the USA in the Washington DC Beltway area and, uh, and can provide you with training courses to help you prepare for your PMP exam. So again, thanks for watching and I hope you found this helpful.